everyone. Thank you again for coming today. My name is Danielle. I'm the director of exhibits here at the museum, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our Meet the Artist series. And these are one of my favorite programs at the museum because you really get to hear, you know, the insider story about why the artists did what they did, how they did it, the process behind um, the exhibition. So um, this is, of course, one of the many benefits of membership at the Museum of Art or the Oceanside Museum of Art here. And if you're not a member, I encourage you to join. Uh, we do have a special promotion going on, so uh, you can inquire about that at the front desk uh, a little bit later. So today I want to introduce an artist who I have been working closely with over the past few months, Kathy Breslau. And I have so much respect for Kathy. Um, she just has such an innovative approach to her materials and to the way she activates um, every space that she works with. So, Kathy was born in Florida, raised in Baltimore, and she earned her MFA at Claremont Graduate University um, and moved to California in 1992, which is when she began exhibiting her work professionally. Kathy's been in over 25 solo exhibitions and over 40 exhibi uh, group exhibitions um, around the nation. So she exhibits quite often, a very busy artist, um, so we're very happy to have her work here. And I just want to let everyone know that her exhibition will be on view in the Parker Gallery through February 12th. So please tell all your friends about it, and um, hopefully we'll see you back here. And when Kathy's done talking today, we are going to open it up to some questions, so um, hopefully you'll have some questions for her. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming Kathy Breslin. for allowing me to have this opportunity to exhibit my work here. And I would also like to thank uh, Danielle Susala Deary, who just spoke, who's director of exhibitions here, who has been very generous in her time with me and giving me suggestions and ideas and feedback and allowing me to pretty much do what I wanted with the space that I have. And I would like to thank Lisette Guzman, who um, is the gallery and facilities manager, and she helped me install my work and um, has all around just done a ton of stuff to help me with this um, show and putting it on and so forth. And I would also especially like to thank two young women students from the Art Institute, Naz Darudi and Katie Lewis, who have been a huge help to me in the last couple of months to uh, help me develop the project and help me install the project and just generally gave me a lot of support. And finally, but not least, I'd like to thank my husband, Paul Cohen, and the staff of Nationwide Promotions for doing all the printed materials for my exhibition. So um, I would like to start out by saying that uh, I would like to talk to you a little bit about my background, um, the things that motivate me in my work, um, the things that inspire me, concepts, ideas, people, artists, and so forth. Um, and uh, for the last several years, I've been uh, working with a particular industrial material to develop wall, uh, floor, and installation works. Excuse me, one second. <laughs> trying to advance the slides here. So I think that'll be. For those of you who know my work, you know that I work very large scale. So a lot of my work is seven by eight foot pieces. Some of them are four by five foot pieces, but certainly the, uh, the space that I have here um, presented a lot of challenges for me because I had to think about scale. I had to think about how was I going to um, create something really interesting that I thought could be a good site-specific installation. So it was very challenging and actually it was a very good experience for me because it gave me the opportunity to really think uh, out of the box, out of my, more, put me out of my comfort zone and had me thinking about 
the idea of space and what's in space. And actually, um, I had been thinking about that idea for quite a while in some of my other works, which you'll see kind of represent that, but this space really focused me in and had me thinking more about um, how deep is space, the dimensionality of space, and brought up a lot of curiosity and questions I had about it. Um, so I did a lot of reading and so forth to create it. And the first thing I started out with that you see in this particular uh, slide is the materials that I started out thinking about, which were some reflective materials which I thought would help um, deepen the space. And that was kind of a beginning idea. So in my studio, this is a picture inside my studio where um, when I start a particular project or a particular piece of artwork, I develop ideas and I, I brainstorm to myself. I think of like words and um, visual images. I do a lot of research. I read a lot of articles. I read books. I whatever, wherever a particular subject takes me, and the whole idea of space and the cosmos and even just space that's all around us here on Earth interests me. Um, it stimulates my imagination to think about what is it that's in the space we can't see that's all around us. So this is kind of my idea board or whatever you want to call it. It's very informal, but I do a lot of that when I put together my work. So uh, this goes back to my first inspiration, which I thought would be a little bit interesting and relevant because my family had a, um, a chain of fabric stores on the East Coast. And um, my, I spent a lot of time in these stores. And that was my first introduction, I think, to art because it brought me in touch with color, um, design, uh, textures, patterns, um, just lots of different uh, thoughts and ideas. And at the time, I didn't really think much about it, but as my work developed, you know, I kind of keep going back to that thought that that was my first inspiration. So um, in investigating materials, which I, I tend to do a lot of, because I really enjoy investigations and explorations and looking at, I have a lot of curiosity about things in general. Um, I was looking for materials uh, that would have some relationship to the work that I had been doing. I started out as a painter, and I had done lots of different kinds of painting, and I started out with watercolor and mixed media and acrylics, but I've always been interested in transparencies and materials that mimic that kind of transparency. For me, this is kind of my other way of using what I, what I consider to be paint. So travel, um, our company that we have is a promotional products company and it takes us to Southeast Asia um, every year. And so on that opportunity, I found that material that you just saw on the last slide at a trade show in Taiwan. And when I got to know the company and the factory, they invited us to come to their factory in Shanghai or outside of Shanghai. So. This is a picture from the inside of a car traveling into Shanghai. And Shanghai was a very inspirational place for me because as you can see, their buildings are you know, pretty much over the top in terms of their shape and size because they, don't, they aren't regulated like we're regulated where we have to have certain kinds of sizes and shapes to things. So it was very inspirational. And I was able to visit the factory um, in Shanghai, and this is the Liang Plastic Company, and the founders and owners of the company were nice enough to show us around um, and show, show us the extrusion molding machines um, were that, that the actual material comes from. So um, they um, actually have bags of all different colors of pellets that are put into those extrusion molding machines, um, and they then create the mesh in all different patterns. And so that was a very, very interesting thing for me to actually see the material that I was about to be using. So they gave us a tour of the factory, and we saw them preparing the products for shipping. Um, this is um, the founder and his wife showing us um, some of the products that they make. And actually, um, on the bottom right, this is a, a photograph of the actual material that I use and the form that it comes in when it comes to my studio. And it's shipped in rolls like that uh, from China to the US. 
Um, one of the things that was interesting to me is that the material is normally used for the grocery and decorative arts industry, and it has a very short life lifespan. It's normally thrown away shortly after use, and so for me to create artwork out of this particular type of material was really nice because I felt like you know a lot of plastics end up in ocean polluted areas of um, stockpiles in different areas. I believe the picture on the right is actually in Southern California, up in the Los Angeles area, where uh, plastics are you know end up, and um, there's actually areas areas of oceans around the world where these you know tons of plastic. Um, debris ends up and there's just no place for it to go. So the fact that I was making these pieces into art was kind of an added benefit. Um, other things that inspired me, um, we were uh, visiting with our son who was on a semester abroad program and we were in Malaga, Spain in the courtyard there and this guy who is, you know, trying to earn money on the street was creating these incredible um, bubbles with basically two sticks and a string. And it created these amazing um, shaped objects that were very inspiring to me because it goes along with some of the thoughts I have about you know, how fleeting life is and sort of the ephemeral um, feeling about the fragility of life. And this was a piece that I created as a result of that, which is a, a drawing and painting on plastic. It was a commercial, uh, plastic that's used for commercial uh, use. And uh, so that was the result of that. Uh, another thing that inspires me, and it's the whole process going back to the, you know, the things in my studio with all the pictures and the investigations that I've had have taken me to imagery that I have found on um, the internet that was taken by the Hubble telescope, um, which are very interesting ideas about the cosmos. And I think as time goes on, or you know, it's an organic process, and so we're always getting new pictures and new ideas. And this was another um, idea that stimulated my particular installation here, um, and the sense of wonder and mystery about you know what's in the universe and. I had read a few books by Brian Greene, who's a theoretical physicist, um, he's an author of Elegant Universe and many others, and he, you know, he writes and puts things on video that are very user-friendly, so if you're interested in this topic, it's, it's, he, he speaks to all of us, he doesn't just speak to people who are, who are physicists, and he kind of brings it down to something that we can all understand, and I think we all have that curiosity about the universe and what's in it. And this is another um, photograph from the Hubble telescope. And so all of these kinds of things um, influenced me and, and have um, been part of the process in creating my installation here. Um, it's really taken me down that road. So it's been great to have that opportunity. Um, and this was a drawing that I did that's not in this particular exhibition, but it's a, a drawing on a particular plastic as well that was created and influenced by um, those ideas. Um, another thing that interests me and influences my work are other artists, and there's a zillion other artists that influence my work, and most of them are not well known, but the ones that you might be familiar with, Robert Irwin, he's a very famous international artist who's actually in San Diego, and he actually, I think, has a show right now downtown at the Museum of Contemporary Art, or he's part of a, a show there. Uh, he's from the light space movement, um, and he um, is interested in um, the experience that people have when they walk into a space, not just the object itself or the art object, but actually the experience, how, how people feel when they walk into a space, which is maybe not something most people think about when they go to see art, but it's an interesting thought and an interesting um, approach and something that um, has really inspired me a lot. Um, another artist, Judy Pfaff, who's um, a very well-known artist, but not to many people, but to some people um, in the contemporary art world, she was one of the original installation artists. She did a lot of installation work, and she works a lot with or organic shapes and things, and she also does printmaking, but she does these incredible, like, full-scale, full room, room after room after room exhibitions of all kinds of materials, 
and she's very personally involved in the process, and that's, you know, welding and everything. She doesn't use a lot of assistance for her, for her work. So this is a piece that I did, which has, bears a relationship to the um, exhibition that I have here in the project room um, that I did a while ago, but it's definitely connected to the whole idea of space and what's in space and the feeling of um, sort of the fragility and movement and the way that um, things, uh, shadows are created on walls and how that influences the piece. Um, this is another piece called A Parallel Universe, and I've often had the experience of feeling as though we live in parallel universes. We all, you know, have uh, ideas about, um, you know, what goes on in the virtual world versus what goes on in, in various worlds that we live in, and the internet kind of um, emphasizes that as well. Uh, this is a project called Art and Industry that I did um, in for York, Pennsylvania. I was one of five artists that was selected to use some industrial materials, uh, working with a manufacturer um, in the area. And I collaborated with him, as did all the other artists to create uh, uh, artwork based upon the materials that they um, supply to all of us. And that was a very eye-opening experience, and I'm actually was very enthusiastically involved in that and wanting to do that also in San Diego. So I'm working with the San Diego um, World Trade Center to um, identify manufacturers that are willing to offer their you know, products or willing to collaborate with artists. So that's a project that I'm planning for the next couple of years that I'm gonna be involved in here in San Diego County. Um, here's, I'm gonna be showing you a few pieces that I've done in the last um, four or five years. Uh, this is particularly uh, one that represents a lot of the work that I do, which is called Lightness of Being. And again, it's the idea of creating a piece on a wall that has the uh, shadows, that brings out shadows and transparencies that kind of mimics paint. Um, and it's kind of a painting in my mind, that this is like a nine by eight foot painting. This is another piece I did that involves using a variety of other materials, not just the mesh, but um, I was also using other accessible materials um, that people use from the craft world. Um, a floor piece that I did, I did several floor pieces, and this is one of them called Carousel. Um, it's 11 feet in diameter, and I, there's a ton of beads and beadwork and all kinds of stuff that I used on this particular piece, and I was involved in thinking about the spiral, the idea of the spiral, and the idea of, um, you know, you see seashells that have that spiral influence, um, and that's what motivated this particular piece. So going back, way back in time, um, when I first started going to museums and I first, first started seeing art, um, I was very influenced by Vasily uh, Kandinsky because I was just taken by the shapes, the color, the patterns, the movement of his work, and um, I really identified with it. And I've always been a, pers a person who uses abstraction. I didn't start out with realism. I really started out with abstraction. And um, so he was a very big influence on how I thought about things. So I'm gonna show you a few very early works that I did. This one um, called Geometry is a watercolor, one of my first real series of works that I did um, that uh, were basically motivated by a lot of artists who were involved and interested in that kind of work. Um, this is an acrylic piece, a mixed media collage. So I think there's another uh, aspect to an artist's work, and that is their mentors and their teachers. And I, and I always want to honor him because, Roland Reese, because he was such a big influence on me and my work. Um, he's an internationally known artist who has worked um, in uh, the, the Guggenheim and uh, various, um, the Whitney Museum and other, art, uh, other museums around the world. And he's also the founder of the graduate program Visual Arts at Claremont Graduate University. And I worked with him as a private student because for about four years before I went to graduate school because I had a family, I had kids and I didn't want to leave my kids and my family and so I would visit him once a month and he was a huge influence on just the direction and we would have conversations about art and 
it was just a really great uh, time frame, very stimulating, very motivating for me. So I'm just going to show you a few pieces that I did as a result during that time. Um, I did a lot of what you would call hard edge abstraction during that time. I was interested in computer systems and um, how they worked. So I did a whole series called Connections and a whole series called Passages, which is was with acrylic paint. So, and these pieces represent that particular kind of work. So when I went to school, when I went back to graduate school, which is 2003, um, I was very interested in sort of stepping away from painting and wanting to experiment a lot, because that's kind of what school's about, is experimentation. And so I was interested in creating paintings without a surface. So I did a lot of pouring of paint. So these particular pieces are standing on their own, basically. It's just acrylic paint. I poured them and then lifted them and added a few basic plastic supports. But these became uh, very fascinating and interesting to me. Um, and so that's that piece. And here's another piece that was done in very much the same way. Um, just a lot of experimenting at the time with, um, with pouring paint and trying to create paintings in a different way to take them off the canvas, take them off the, the structure of a background of an, actual, of an actual frame, of an actual panel of some kind, and just to see what, what might happen. So I include this piece because this is what I would call a transitional piece for me. I, it's using the, the transparent material that you saw from the factory in Shanghai. Um, but I used paint, so I poured paint along with it. So this was kind of my step away from painting, but not completely. And then after that, I pretty much left the paint behind and used other materials, the industrial mesh materials, as part of that process. So. This is an example of an installation that I did um, for an art center, a solo exhibition um, in Las Vegas. And um, this is very similar to a lot of the types of exhibitions that I do where I have an opportunity to use the wall and the floor and the ceiling to kind of create. I like creating a space that's the wall, the floor, and the ceiling, which is why here at this particular exhibition I had so much fun, you know, using the wall, using the ceiling, using the floor to kind of, you know, use it as a whole experience. So also in my studio, I, um, lots of times, I'm a real sucker for uh, quotations of all kinds. And um, so this was one particular one. Uh, in my studio, I have them posted all over because they motivate me. You know, they give me inspiration. You know, artists spend a lot of, a lot of time alone in their studios where they're not really, uh, you know, around other people. So it's very inspiring um, to, uh, to have the words of other people that might help inspire us. So this was um, from T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets. So, and uh, it really um, captures my imagination. So with that, that's pretty much the end of my slideshow. I would like to open it up to questions that people might have about my work or Anything they might like to ask about the exhibition here? Okay. Do you do uh, any representational painting or anything of that kind right now? Um, you know, I um, the question was, do I do any representational um, work at all? And actually, um, no, I don't. But I do a lot of drawings a lot of times that are representational in the process of my developing my pieces. There's times when I do very sort of small realistic drawings, but in the in the end result, no, I have not really investigated that. I mean, how do you uh, think about your work now in relation in the relation to sculpture as a, a genre? Question. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I definitely. I probably didn't mention that, unless, but I mean brought that up because. Um, I definitely feel as though once I stepped away from painting that my work became more sculptural, more three-dimensional. I have more interest in space, the dimensions. There are three dimensions of, you know, however many dimensions there actually are in space, I don't really know, but, um, but investigating 
sculpture. So I definitely see my work as sort of multimedia sculptures as opposed to paintings or models. Do you, do you find that um, you think about gravity because your work really wants to fly? Yeah, it's out there in space. So yeah. do you find the gravity sometimes a limitation and it makes you change what you intended in the first place with some pieces? Uh, well, I think, I think the only way I really kind of think about gravity is when I want the space to kind of represent the th all dimensions, you know, with floor pieces or um, as in this particular space, I used some ideas of using small pieces on the floor as kind of like weighing things down. But yeah, I mean, I really like things that float and things that are, that are not connected to gravity. Or that we might not think about as connected to gravity. Do you have a conscious um, interest in quantum mechanics and the theoretical <coughs> physics and the idea of parallel universes? Yeah. And well, I have to say I'm not a scientist, so I really don't have the background in science, but I do do a lot of reading by physicists that, that put out information that's both um, logical and we can all benefit by that I can understand, like Brian Greene, who I mentioned earlier, you know, he's a theoretical physicist, he teaches at Columbia University, and he actually puts out a lot of books and information that's so very user-friendly that we can all understand, and, and yeah, I have a lot of interest in reading more and more about it, but doing this installation here just really stimulated my thinking in that direction. Are your floor installations three-dimensional? And then do you have to block off the space around them so they don't get treaded, you know, people don't walk on them? Yeah. Are the floor installations, yeah. like, set off so that, I, you know, I really try, I really like the idea of people being able to experience the work that I do. I like them to be able to touch things. And of course, you know, when you touch things, things can get, ruined and, and so I have a real conflict in my mind, you know, about that. So on the one hand, I, I don't want people to touch them because I don't want them to destroy them, but inadvertently. But by the same token, I want them to touch them because I just think it's great if people can touch artwork, you know, and not have to worry about it. And they are three-dimensional and I, I, I use other supports underneath the floor, like that one floor piece you saw, the round one, there's a support underneath. So that made it more three-dimensional, yeah. Yeah, you also use recycled materials. I mean, I was surprised that you have to um, import mm -hmm. this, this plastic, I mean, instead of using, you oh. know, all the plastic oh. taking apart. But I know it would take a lot of time. I mean, as an artist, it probably would be most impractical to be right. taking apart bags of oranges to use right. the bags. I have used, I have used, I have used, I have used recycled materials as well. Yeah, I have used recycled materials. And I think of these materials in a way as being recycled even though they're new because they're gonna be sold to other, to the grocery industry or people like that where, you know, I don't know if you've seen like the onions and potatoes you bring home in those bags that are stretchy, you know, and they're open netted kind of things. So um, that's what this material is. And so I, they're gonna throw those away ultimately. So I think about using the material I use in that way, but I also use lots of different kinds of materials. So I'm using other kinds of plastics as well and other kinds of materials too in my work. It, not just that one particular kind, but I am always interested in recycled materials. Yes? Uh, something that struck me was your two photos of the, of the uh, waste of plastic, you know, in the ocean mm -hmm. and so forth. To me, that strikes as a real theme that you could tune into in your painting, but the idea of getting that thought out to the public that there's just a tremendous amount of waste in the products that, that you're using for your, for your paintings. Yeah, you know, I do mention that um, in statements that I've written and things like that, but I don't, um, I don't actually like advertise it in a way um, because I, I mean, when people come to see my work, oftentimes when I use those materi materials, I do this, that, because that's what I'm using. Um, I tend not to like to throw things in people's faces about, you know, politics and, 
I mean, there's a whole group, there's plenty of people who already do that and do it really well, you know, and they create art for political, they have a particular political statement to make and, and all that, so I kind of try to avoid that because my thinking is more, how can I use these materials to create things that are beautiful and that people can experience um, in a different way? So, a good question, thank you. So, all my life, but not professionally until the early 90s is when I started uh, exhibiting my work professionally. So that's it. So I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much.